And again, welcome everybody. We're here to talk about how we're going to generate 100 leads every month for our real estate business. And, and I just couldn't be more happy than to bring on, so there she is, her beautiful face, and then you have to look at my ugly little mug there. But I'm Bob Stewart. I'm going to host her today. I'm the community evangelist here at Active Rain. And, and we're going to be speaking with Katrina Benton. She's a real estate agent with Keller Williams in Anchorage, Alaska. Katrina, how are you? I'm good, Bob. Good morning. Good morning to you. And it's a little bit early in the morning. It's 8 o'clock, right? It's 9 over there in, in Anchorage. So you're up bright and early for us. I appreciate you um, doing this. So thank you. Let's let's jump in here and and talk about some facts, right? So what we're going to talk about today is how Katrina uses Craigslist and her blog to, to really drive a, a lot of real estate leads for her business. And so let's start out. With, with just the facts, okay, Katrina? So I guess a, a couple of questions kind of related to how you generate leads. And the first one would be, how much time are you spending each day on your lead generation stuff? So I, lead generation is my full-time job. That's all that I'm doing at this point. Um, when I first started doing my lead generation, I was just a single agent. And so I was spending a two hours a day time block for it. Now I have a team, so I spend eight hours a day um, doing internet lead generation. Okay, so so the stuff that you're talking about, and, and maybe the the level that you do it at, is 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 maybe not something that every single agent's going to be able to do out there, right? Because now you you've built a team around this idea, but you did start out doing these same techniques, and, and you were just a single agent, time blocking for two hours every day. Yeah, I started like four years ago. And I would just time block every day when we generation, like, you know, we're supposed to, 9 to 11, and I would just do my stuff on the Internet. And it eventually, you know, it got overwhelming, and I had to hire people and leverage and leverage and leverage. And now I'm to the point where I do this for eight hours a day, just go on the Internet and um, direct traffic to my site, basically. And my whole team is able to go and sell the real estate at this point, which is so awesome. So here's what we're going to do, you guys. We're, we're going to, I just want her to kind of set the scene for what she does, and I'm going to ask her a few more questions. Then we're going to get in and we're going to talk about kind of the anatomy of a Craigslist ad like Katrina does it. And it's quite a bit different from, I think, how traditionally people would do it, or if you'd never kind of had some schooling on this, how you might jump in and start doing it. So we're going to talk about the anatomy of an ad, and then I'm actually going to have her show you how she does an ad. And then we're going to, at the end, we're going to pull in her blog and some of the, because she does some things with her Active Rain blog that, that are really awesome in terms of helping her blogs rank better and in terms of helping her, her blog to actually generate leads for, for her business as well. So, okay, so let's say that, that back in the beginning you were spending about, about two hours a day doing this. And, you know, talk to me for a second about the quality of the leads that you're able to generate, because I think there's this, you know, we had a real estate brokerage a long time ago, and, and one of the things we always ran up against is, oh, these internet leads. You know, they're they're not. It's not like every single person that registers on your website is going to buy a house tomorrow, right? So, talk to me for a second about the the quality of these leads, and maybe even like the the mindset that you have to put yourself in to actually work these things. Okay, so with internet leads, um, right now we get about two percent into contract within the first thirty days, and Right now, I think, you know, we could always do better with that. I think right now it's just a capacity thing. Um, each person only has so many hours in the day. So I've had all sorts of different conversion rates as I've gone through this and grown my business. In the beginning, I was selling about one, one in ten, you know, when I was only generating 50 leads a month. Now that I generate much more than that, it get, it's, you can't do that because you, you can't just be in that many places at once. But the lead bill people. We do get some spam Mickey Mouse, that kind of stuff, but you just delete it and keep moving forward. I think the, the idea here that I had was just to generate a high volume of leads and then to help the ones that raise their hand that actually want help. The other thing is that a lot of them don't buy a house. Most of them don't buy a house within the first 30 days, but we put them in our system and our drip campaigns and two or three years later, a lot of them are buying houses. So there's a lot to think about there in terms of conversion rate. I think if, but if I look at it and I say if I get 50 phone numbers, they're going to get one sale pended per buyer's agent in that um, first 30 days, and then another one the next month. You know, somebody who's making two months to buy it, 
and then another one in that year. Um, is generally the trend that I'm starting to see now that I have a team that's up and trained and in production. Um, but I, I mean, my conversion rate was really, really low when I was by myself and generating a thousand leads a month because I could only physically go out and show so many houses. So I think the conversion rate being low is more reflective on me and my team and what we're doing than on the leads because they're all just people. You know, people need food, shelter, and water, and I, would, I don't live in the house that I was born in, and I don't think too many people do, so people move, and there's always a percentage of the population that's moving. So if you just think about that in terms of statistics, and so if you have a neighborhood where you have a 3% turnover, and you get leads from there, probably 3% of them are going to buy. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, that, that makes absolute sense. So you're saying when, when you were actually generating a lower number of leads, you were able to spend more time on those and you were converting at a higher rate, and then you kind of ran into the problem of, okay, I'm generating too many leads for my business it's, right now. Yeah, way too many, and I had to go build a team because um, what I did, they, don't, they, they didn't stop. They didn't stop coming in when I was like, okay, this is too much for me. Um, it didn't slow down. <laughs> I built some things that just kind of kept coming in. So we just hired um, a pretty big team and the superstars, and they're all great, and um, we spent the first six months of this year just really training and training and recruiting and um, getting talent. And now I have a whole team in production, and so they go sell the houses, and they hit about two to two and a half percent of their, okay. you know, the ones with phone numbers. I have to say that the ones with phone numbers. Okay, so let's get in here and let's talk about the anatomy then of of what you're doing on your Craigslist posts. And the the first thing for me, I, I kind of think of of a of the post in three ways, okay? The headline, kind of the body of the post then, so what somebody actually sees when they click on the headline, and then, then the call to action, or what's inside of that post that's gonna drive that person to take the, the, the action that you desire them to take. So let's start first with the headline. And so what I wanna do right now is I'm actually gonna take us out here, and we're gonna go into to the Anchorage section of Craigslist, okay, so we're on, Craig's, anchorage.craigslist.org, and what we're talking about and, and where most of the, the things that you're working with are inside of this real estate for sale section on Craigslist. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, we do post and services, but the bulk of our ads are in the real estate by owner or by broker. So you guys post we, some um, stuff down here in the real estate services section? Yeah, we do. We post some seller ads down there, and then um, an ad that says, like, hire a positive and proactive broker to help you find your next home. So guys, we post a couple services, but not most of it's in the real estate for sale. Do you guys get seller leads out of Craigslist then? Yeah. You do? Not, I, not, I would imagine sellers. not even close to the rate that you're getting buyer leads, but you are getting seller leads out of the services area of Craigslist. Oh, for sure, yeah. Um, and I put, seller ads, I, put it, I put seller ads in the real estate grade broker as well. Okay, okay, so let's come in here, and if you guys want to get a look at Katrina's ads, what you're going to do is you can come to the Anchorage area of Craigslist, and you can search Come Home Anchorage, and so she does a very specific kind of layout, or the body of her posts are, are she's got a formula for it, and we're going to see it here in a minute, but if you want to look at her ads, or you can follow along with me on the screen, you can go to Come Home Anchorage, and <laughs> I would check back with her from time to time because she's always kind of doing something a little bit different, but she's going to talk about what she's done in the past and some of what she's doing now. But what we're going to see here now is these are all of the ads from from you, right? Talk for a second about the headlines on these ads and what are you trying to, like, What what what's the thought process and what goes into what you're trying to do when you're actually writing the headline of the ad? I want it to stand out and get people to click on it. I don't want to be like super, super specific with it. Now, why is that? To... Okay. See, they'll rule it out if I put it it's in a certain um, spot or has this many bathrooms or has a garage or not or whatever. If I put all that information in my headline, they don't have to click on it to find out what it is, and they can just kind of rule it out. Uh, we put the symbols in there because we want just them to stand out. When you're looking at this list, it's easy to skip stuff. It's easy to just kind of blur through it. Um, we always um, put our property on there without prices because we want them to have to click. So we want to write an interesting headline that will get people interested enough just to open it up 
and not disqualify it before that they do that. So let's look so, at like the, the let's look at the 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 contrast between what you do and then kind of what the general ads out there are. And you you know you see these all caps and that sort of thing. But a lot of these ads in here, they've got the price in there, right? They've got the bedrooms, they've got the square foot, they've got all of the things that a consumer would need to to, to know in order to disqualify that, right? Because if I'm not looking for a hundred and forty thousand dollar three bedroom thousand square foot house, like I'm not going to click on that ad. So you're trying to be quite a bit more inclusive with with the stuff that with the headlines that you write so as not to get people just to automatically disqualify it. Yeah, I want as many people to click on it as possible because that's what's going to give me SEO. So I don't really care if they want that or not. I want them to click on it. That's all. Okay, so 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 let's go through here and look at a couple of these ads, and, and, and then we'll get in and we'll maybe look at the body, and we'll kind of contrast some of your ads with, with what some other people are doing, and, and maybe even with what some of the folks in the audience are doing. So this one right here, and, and I clicked on this earlier. No, I guess I clicked on this one earlier. Charming three-bedroom, two-bath, townhouse, townhouse-style condo. So I'm going to go in here, and, and I'm expecting to see, I think, like, an ad for an actual listing right in here, but you're doing something a little bit different to me. So I land in here and, and kind of share with me what I see now. So when we put the cartoon houses, um, when I first started doing Craigslist, I used to post real properties. And then I heard on a webinar a guy was posting cartoon houses. So I started posting the cartoon houses instead. And our click rate it doubled. It, people like it. They want to see what it is they're interested. Um, it's a really simple ad that I write, and if they want, if they're looking for a three-bedroom condo on Muldoon, it's interesting enough that they'll click through to it. Um, this goes against everything in my brain that I I would click on, but I'm not like most people. Most people like warm and fuzzy things, and so I've had a lot of success with just the cartoon house, and then clicking over to, so that's going to go over to that neighborhood, and then the three-bedroom homes that are available over there that are townhouses. Um, okay, so you, so you are, and you're doing this in almost every single ad that you run. The, the landing page on Craigslist is not designed to give the person really any information. I mean, I mean right, that's the reality. It's not designed to give them information about three-bedroom, two-bath townhouses in Muldoon. Right? No. What is the perp when no. they land on this Craigslist app, what are you trying to get them to do? Click. I just want click. them to click. You want them to want visit to visit your website. Mm-hmm. Is is is, because, is that your you, strategy for everything? I mean if I look in every single one of these ads, am I gonna see the same thing? Four bedroom home in, in Eagle River? Yeah, but that yeah. one's gonna go to my uh, yeah, the same thing. <laughs> this one's gonna um, go where? They broke the link. They broke. Okay, so so not not a, so this one's a four bedroom, two bath home close to the base, right? You're gonna give them a chance to find the four bedroom, yeah. two bath home quotes. close to the base. And we use a lot of quotes, warm and fuzzy things. I just try to be as appealing to people as I can. Um, information will make them think. If you can get to their emotion through quotes and that sort of thing, and we're really selling lifestyle more than anything. Um, and you can get them to click. I think it's funny. People would think no one would click on that, but they do. Um, I do do some ads that even have um, less of a signature to them. Uh, I get flagged a lot. I have a lot of people in Anchorage that don't like me posting on Craigslist, um, other agents, I think. Yeah, and so let's talk just, about that for let's talk about that for a second because people your ads get ghosted. Yeah. People people say, "Oh, my ad got ghosted or it got flagged." Um, and you even have a couple of like super huge fans who will go on here and and write things like, "This person's a spammer." And um, free press, free press, <laughs> free press. <laughs> so talk to me for a second about that because I've heard you in the past say things like, "Oh, if they're worried about my business, that means they're not focused on selling houses." And yeah, it's how do you, fine. Yeah, it's fine because, exactly, um, if they were out selling houses, they wouldn't have time to do that, is what I always say. Um, it's nice that they notice us. I think we are having a lot of success, and so I just have to take it as a compliment. Um, they do flag our ads a lot, which is okay. Um, we post, I think, around 300 ads a day. So, 
people are going to flag them, and that just gives us an opportunity to post more. Craig just will only let you post, I think it's like 800 active at the same time. Um, so if they flag them, then we have opportunities to post new ads and refresh our marketing. And I'm, they're spending, obviously, hours flagging my ads, so they're not out selling houses. That's fine with me. Um, so are, are you, yeah. like, ha, ha, do you have any sense for how, like, do half of your ads get flagged and taken down? And so of the 300 you might post in a day, 150 of them are coming up? or It really varies, because I'll go months with nothing getting flagged. And then I'll have, like, just some days I will log in, and there's three pages gone. And so I'm going to sit up all night and flag my ad. So um, it's a, it's always, it's, it varies, but I would say probably a quarter of them end up just getting erased. But that's why we save our ads, and we write them once, we save them in Excel. It's like a 30-second thing to repost them. It's not yeah. a huge deal for us. And you're going you're gonna to take us in here in a minute and show us the, the process of going in and posting an ad. What? Mm -hmm. what when you were first getting started, if you can put yourself back in that mindset and you're doing two hours of lead generation a day, surely you weren't posting 300 ads at that point. How many ads were you posting in the beginning that started to kind of allow you to, to get the... I was, I was keeping about 50. I figure what it is is that every if I post in 48 hours, if I post 100 ads, I'll get 100 leads a month. If I, if I continuously do that in a systematic way, and I just have a hundred ads going, I'll get a hundred leads. Is what it it averages out to. So it's pretty much one for one each ad because you have some that'll give you twenty leads and then you have some that'll give you none. And so until you play with it enough, you just want to figure I need a hundred ads out there that are all unique, that are different, that go to different parts of my website and that just drive traffic. I want fifty a day just to start, that's what I did. And so in two hours you can write, you know, quite a few ads. I can, I can write a hundred ads probably in two hours now. But um, at first, it's going to take you a little bit of time, especially if you're not familiar with it. I think, but that's really what I did was just my nine to eleven lead generation was just writing the ads, and then we get um, Craigslist on our phones, and we hit renew from our phones. So, so when, so when you're standing in line at the grocery store, you'll go in and renew three or four renew, ads. Renew, renew. Yeah, I run three or four ads here and there, and um, I do that all day, and then I have a marketing coordinator who does that all day. She just hits renew on her phone every couple minutes. And, um, so the, 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 the process of renewing an ad will take an ad from being like, like let's say you posted the ad a week ago, you renew the ad, and now that ad will be an ad po posted today? Yeah, and every 48 hours it will let me renew it for 30 days. And then it'll still be active for 15 days after that, and then it won't be on Craigslist anymore. But when you hit the Renew button, it takes it back to the top of the list, and that's a lot easier than writing a whole other ad. So we just go you know, to our last page that's renewing, and we just refresh it throughout the day and click Renew four or five times. All right. All right. So we've got some headlines here, and kind of the key around the headlines is, don't be too inclusive, right? And like you might even consider, like let's say you had a listing. Would you go in then and do you ever do ads that are designed to like drive to like, to, to just to really highlight yes. that listing? Yes. So I do ads that drive them to like the Brevity Property Specific page and then I do other ads that are just straight out of um, my market leader, my eEdge system. It has that Craigslist ad and so I'll post those property specific ads but that's not what's driving the traffic. That's to keep my sellers happy. Okay, so what, um, the, 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 just, stuff, you know, the stuff designed to drive the traffic is, is, is the stuff that's kind of these wide open things, and when they land on the page, they're, they're being directed to your website. So let's, let's look again at this ad. We'll talk about the body of the post. Oops, that was the broken one. So somebody's got to fix that, Katrina. Ah, okay, I know. this one that was good. Okay, so... We've got the body of the post you talked about. You've got the 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 fun image, right? The cartoon house, the 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 warm and fuzzy that wouldn't necessarily apply to you. And I think a lot of, I mean, I, I'm definitely guilty of this. A lot of us think to ourselves, oh well, I would never do that. Like I would never click on that ad, or that's just not me, or you know, I I would never give my name and my email address to to some website. But the reality is, I mean. People do. Hundreds of people, people every month are do. doing this for you, right? People do. Okay. So it works. 
it's against everything in my brain, but I'm a little bit unusual, so I just have to accept okay. that this is what most people like. <laughs> and then in this, this next little piece is just basically to get them to head back to your website. And we're going to look in a second at where that goes. And then this, this third piece here then is, is kind of a, I don't know, what, a signature line? And you guys are using something similar on almost every ad with this, this type of a signature line? Yeah, well, the ones you'll find searching come home anchorage, that's it. And then I have other ones that I have, you know, even less information, just one of my buyer's agent's names and their phone number, and that's it. Um, but I run them all different because I run so many ads, they have to look different. But this right here is my, like, original. This is what I ran for years, just this one alone. And I like it because it's got all the calls to action that I want them to take. Um, no matter who you are, you can click on one of those three links at the bottom. And if you're buying or selling, it works. Or if you're just interested in real estate, then you can click on that one and like us on Facebook and get daily updates about real estate in Anchorage. Um, you guys are do. doing pretty good with the Facebook page. This is kind of a side note here because I don't know that your Facebook page necessarily is generating a bunch of, of it does. leads for you. It does. Okay, so there we go. I'm wrong again. Um, I love so, it. See, you have eleven hundred. You have eleven hundred likes on your on your Facebook page. That's pretty impressive. I mean, are you you getting some good interaction out there, or um, you just yeah, get some well, shares what I do, here and there, and you get it, some likes? And I just use it really to promote my blog and help with the SEO. And I do. I think I started this page in January, so it should have eleven hundred right now. I think okay. I wish it was bigger. Um, but I do get a lot of interaction from it. I do get people uh, email me that are friends of mine on Facebook because I don't put a whole, I do put a lot of real estate stuff, but not a whole lot of real estate stuff on my personal page. Um, so a lot of people just communicate me, with me through this page. It's kind of funny how that works out. Um, but it's right, because they're, they're on, on Facebook, Facebook and they think of something and, and, and you're... It's a place on Facebook and our, our customers can check in when they're at the office and they do. So that's what I also like about that. But I do get leads from it. I get a lot of leads from it. Really interesting. All right. Well, we weren't, we're not going to talk about that today, how you generate no, leads on whole other level. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So we've got the body of these posts. Let's go in here now and let's look. Well, here, here's actually, and this will lead to what we're going to do a little bit later. Um, th this, is, this is a little bit different style of ad, right? The Little Brook neighborhood, and you're, and you're focused on a very specific place inside of, inside of your market. What are you doing with this ad? So here you've got what, just a link to a search of homes in that subdivision. And then you've also got what, some, your blog post in here. We'll talk about this in a little bit, OK? So you can see you, you're doing a little bit different. Use some images. Use a little bit of text. But again, you're, you're not kind of throwing the full Monty out there. You're not trying to market one particular listing. You're really just giving kind of this open look because you realize that people are kind of browsing through here. And if they're looking for something, Right, you want to be able to provide a form. And you guys, I would really encourage you, because we can't go through and look at all these ads, go through and look at what she's doing, because you can see that she's, to me, it would seem like, Katrina, you can correct me if I'm wrong, you're, you're kind of focusing on things that you know people are interested in in your market, right? Like the idea of a yeah. spacious duplex, that's something pretty interesting, right? Uh, or the idea of a fixer-upper condo, or a uh, four-bedroom, two-bath house. I mean, all these different things are things that people are interested in in your market, right? Yeah, and there there are things that like if you if you were thinking in your head, if I was going to move, what would I be looking for? So I do that a lot of times, and then a lot of times I look at what our customers are actually looking for, what my buyers agents are actually out shopping, and I'll post you know that if I have a lady who says I need a five bedroom home on the south side, then I'll be like, well maybe I should do an ad about that and get more people like you because he's going to go out and show all these houses, you can be familiar with that. So. Um, just a different strategy there, but I think the biggest thing was I also use the Google AdWords, and so I know like Bayshore is a good word to use in Anchorage or Eagle River or Duplex, or you can use that Google AdWords tool and just really narrow down like what you want to focus on, what people are actually looking for on the internet. Um, the other thing is I want it to rank on Google, like if somebody got on Google and they typed in um, South Anchorage Home Under 250, they're going to get that ad. So there's a little bit to be said there about the SEO because I don't just want the Craigslist shoppers, I want the Google shoppers. And so just the style that you write your ads in, you can rank on Google 
if you type it the way that somebody might type it on Google. So someone yeah. might actually type that South Anchorage comes under 250. Um, and so I titled the headline that way, and then I put that price to sell now just to make it a little more applicable. Um, but just ha use a little bit of thought behind it about what, what are you actually showing to your buyers? What do you actually have listed? Advertise about that neighborhood. Advertise about homes like it. Um, that way you'll get more clicks on your own listing, too. Okay, let's go in here and look at this. Let's go look at this charming. So we, we've been on this ad a couple of times. Let's and people are clicking through, right? Tell me, you gave me some stats earlier. How many you've had? How many clicks to your website from from Craigslist in the last thirty? Was it the last week? In the last week, how many have you had? Um, in the last week, we have twelve oh two from Craigslist and nine sixty two from the blog. So twelve hundred two clicks to your website from Craigslist and nine hundred two clicks from your blog back to your website. So did you guys see, okay, let's, let's look at that one more time. So I get in here, and she's talking about a charming three-bedroom, two-bath, townhouse, townhouse-style condo. Now, I would expect, so I click that link, and I think what a lot of people would do, even when they're trying to drive folks back to their website, would be I would, I would throw them on, like, one listing that was this one house that was a three-bed, two-bath condo in this area, but you're doing something a little bit different. So talk about this page that you're linking people back to. Okay, so this goes back to all the charming um, two dead and two bath condos that are in that neighborhood, that are in that area of town. So I'm not, I have, instead of one chance to capture this lead, be like, look at this house, it's shiny, give me your phone number. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and show them all 19 that are available and advertise all 19 of them. I'm like, while you're here, well, who am I to say which one you should pick first? So I just send it back to the list. And then they can just scroll down and they can see everything that's available in that neighborhood with three bedrooms and two bathrooms. People like that. They like not being sold one particular thing. And it's really it's just coming from contribution and it's providing service. And I think it's pretty obvious that that's what we're doing here. We're just trying to help people to find their house. Um, and so when we communicate with people on that level from the get-go, it's a completely different um, conversation than if they call about a specific property. So what you're doing is your website gives you the ability, you're kind of doing this pre-performed search. So you're not saying, like, here, let me just send them to the front of my site, and they can try to find the three-bedroom, two-bath houses. You're not trying to send them to one listing, like you said, and kind of pigeonhole them into that listing. You're coming in here, you're setting up a search, and you kind of, you're setting the search up in a way to kind of drill it down on those houses that you're talking about, right? So you've got a specific area of Anchorage. You're putting them into a specific price range. Um, looks like you're even giving listings that are less than two months old, so if there's any, I guess the, the listings that are on there for a long time, they're overpriced or something, you don't want to show them those, right? You're giving yeah, them just I like, condos. I don't like to waste my buyer's agent's time, so um, I'm not going to be advertising properties in the market for six months, it's not going to happen, um, is, is one big part of it, or short sales. I'm not, I don't, I uncheck that box. Okay. Um, just They can still search it themselves and they can call us and we'll go show it to them, but just to make it so, like, when I say you have a moving ready house, it's going to be easy transaction, this is the search that we do for that one. Because it's so, a new property that's better. So for each of your ad, t give me, okay, so you said you're really quick at this now, but, like, let's say you were setting this particular ad up. What is, what is, the, how much time does it take you to set this ad up? In the beginning, probably 10 minutes. Now, about 30 seconds. Okay, I'm going to, so it's going to be a little bit longer than 30 seconds, but that's, come on. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna flip it over to you. It's not very much. Okay, I'm going to flip the screen over to you. I'm going to have Katrina go through and show you guys the setup process for one of these. So I'm going to make you the presenter right now, and somewhere on your screen there, Katrina, maybe behind the scenes, there's going to be a thing that says, um, you're being made the presenter. Would you like to show your screen? So what I did this morning, um, how do I make that smaller? There. Um, I went through here and I did a search for a specific neighborhood. And so I got like the year bill, the square foot, how many bedrooms are in that neighborhood, and where it's at, and then the elementary school. So I've narrowed down the search, and then I want to go get it down. It gets it down to about nine houses on that side of town. Um, if I want to narrow it down a little bit further, I 
So what you what she's doing now is she's she's switching to a map view and she's gonna she's gonna narrow down on a real particular part of town, so that when so somebody I, comes in off that ad, right now we're seeing five houses that are right around that part of town. So then um, now that's that's the page that I'd like to land them on. I want to get it down to like five houses, and what I'll do is I'll go my account. Go, oh, I got someone loving on me. <laughs> um, housing offered. We had to go real estate by broker. I don't know if I like this. And I'll just grab. Okay, what did you just do there? You went to, you have a notepad on Craigslist? They allow you to like yeah, store some stuff I have a notepad that has all of our um, signatures in it and the format for the ad. So like this is the one that I'll use this time. I'll go control C. Okay, so this is just a piece of HTML code. Go ahead and paste it in there. And basically what you're doing is you're laying the format for that ad, correct? Yeah, so that's the format for the ad. And then I'm going to use this signature because I've I've got you can see I've got several different signatures that I use. So like I could come over here Grab that. Put so that instead, of, instead of that real short signature, you're going to give us the full-blown signature. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm going to take, go over here, grab my link, copy it, and then come over here and see where it says a harass equals. That's um, my code, my HTML code for my link. And I want it to go there. And then I'm going to type um, view full details and photos at comehomeanchorage.com. And then up here, so this is a south, like these homes right here are all in a neighborhood called Sunset Manor. So I'm going to post. If I look at them, they're all like terrific ocean view area, highly sought after sunset manner. And I just look at like what the other agents have said about it. And it looks like some of them have inlet views. So I can say home with inlet views. Because that's going to be something that people are going to um, click on, and then I'm going to say it's in Sunset now because that is a desired neighborhood. Um, and then I'm going to put my 99515 zip code because a lot of people are learning their zip code. Oh, what am I doing? Okay. Um, and then I'm going to take this headline here, Control-C, copy, Control-V to paste. And I'm going to put it there that it's, it's a home with inlet views because if someone types that on Google and they're in Anchorage, they'll get me um, with my H1 tag. So we made the heading that and we say to find the full details. And I have the signature there that I copied and pasted into there. And now I'm assuming I'm you got one, are you going to put a, an image in there or is that already in there? Um, no, well, on that one, I'm not going to put an image. If it goes to my blog, I do because I have the images hosted. But I don't really do the, the um, on the ones that go straight to the website, I don't do a clickable picture because okay. I don't post any specific house. So I'd have to, you know what I mean, I'd have to go over here and I'd have to pick one of these pictures if I wanted to put it in there. Okay, I got and it. And I don't want it in there because what if that house sells next week? Yeah, I want this ad evergreen. I want to be able to renew it from here to the end of the time. Like, I'm going to save this copy here, uh, or this text that was from there. Um, I'll save that in Excel, and then we'll um, do it over and over. So, uh, like this one, I do. I can do just a cartoon house. It's moving ready. Look at that one. That's cute. Go like that. So I just attach a cartoon, but yeah, I do do clickable images when they relate to my blog because those images are going to be there forever. And so see how it says Home with Inlet Views, and they can click on the links, and hit Publish. Now, if I were to create, 
Craigslist right now, it wouldn't be active. Craigslist in Anchorage updates every 15 minutes. So I would have to wait until 945, and then it will show up on the site. I can see it, though, just to make sure that everything's right. Chromosome with views. And I go right to that, to those houses. So they'll go in there and they'll, have, they'll see houses and they'll have right there, no matter what. So six months from now, it'll be different houses, but the ad will still, you know, look like this, and it'll still go to a list of houses just like that. Pull up your notepad um, file again for me for a second, because I think there's probably a bunch of people on here like, hold on, wait a minute, the, the, what was that HTML? Like, where did that come what from? <laughs> Um, so what I do is I'm not an expert in HTML or any kind of coding, really. Um, I learned to write HTML when I was 12 years old. I had a GeoCity site, and so I learned to write HTML in Java just as a child having fun. Um, people that I've helped with the system help them get it going. I directed them some videos on YouTube. You can go how to write HTML, and then about a day or two, you probably could write this ad. If but, but really, all, all you need to learn how to do is do, how do I do a link, right? And how do I yeah. add an image? Like those are the HTML for a link. And, and really, like highlight the HTML for the link right there. And so like you said, after the equal sign, you just, or between the two quotes, right? That's where you're going to put your link. Uh-huh. Do it, do it for and me real quick. Oh, what if I put that there? Or no, that's a title. But okay, so I could link that. Control. Anybody watching this right now? Like, we would literally this will be recorded. So you, if you can't, like, if you're not trying to write this down or whatever right now, like, we'll record it so that you can come back and 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 look and at what that HTML looks like. And if you wanted to put a picture. What you're going to do is click on the picture, um, right click, copy image location, and it's going to go right here between this IMG SRC. So the so, image source is going to be that location on so, the computer, and that, that would pull that image in. Yeah. So if I put that on there, it would actually, that little house would have been in the ad. And you could have clicked on it and gone, but I don't want to do that because that isn't that house won't be there next week, hopefully. You know, I hope they sell it and it's a different house there next time. Um, but I always do that when I have a blog post. Um, can I show them a Craigslist what I'm talking about there? So this blog, or this post here, see, I just put a cartoon house. This goes to my blog, and I have a clickable picture here. You know, and it takes me to the blog. And then if they click that picture, it takes them to the listings that are over there. So that, see, it gets them off Craigslist. Okay, let's go back. Let, so I'm going to, I'm going to, okay, so that was, you guys saw that the process of her doing that is pretty quick. The keys become, she's got a title that's something that, that somebody in her market might find desirable, but it's not, it's not uh, detailed to the point that people would, would say, uh, I, I'm not interested in that. You've got a very simple body, right? Photo. Um, really, the, the the main factor in this, the body of this post is the the links and the drivers to her website, and then she just is landing them in a very specific place. So she she uses a, a website from Market Leader. There's there's other websites like this out there, right? But the idea is she can perform a search on her her own website that will direct somebody to a very specific place on her website. So I'm gonna I'm gonna grab the the controls back here from you. Let's show my screen, and I, I want to take you guys in for a second. 
and I want to show you the this this is Katrina allowed me to to show you the back end of her um, of her site and and she has again a market leader website and so one of the things that comes with that on the back end is she's got this ability to kind of track what's going on so she knows how many how much traffic she's driving uh, to to certain places she knows like her that her personal marketing has driven 8,200 visitors in the last 30 days to her website and she can actually come down here and she can tell based on specific ads that she's done how many visitors and then how many what and at the end of the day this is really what she's interested in how many contacts those ads have driven so as we look down through here you know we could come in here and see like this particular ad right here it's only driven eight visitors but three of those people registered and so for her if she wanted to to potentially double down on an ad like that and say gosh is there are other kind of variations of this ad that I could run new listing live downtown right so that was a pretty good but again what she does it's that she's probably I would guess not going to to drop you on now she drops us on a, a page that she has about downtown Anchorage where people can search for new listings they can come down here and get some community information there's you know she's got links out to different blogs that she's written about some of the, the communities in downtown Anchorage but that's an ad that even though like for me this would I would have I'm always about landing them on listings. She doesn't do this in that case, but wow, this seems to be working for her, right? And she knows that based on the fact that this ad, even though it's only got eight visitors, has gotten three new contacts. So she can really start to look through what she's doing here and figure out what stuff is driving leads for. And that's on Craigslist. But let's take a look at Active Rain because I, I, I mean, if there's somebody out here who's doing a better job of generating leads with their blogs than Katrina, I don't know who it is. And it's, Katrina, how long have you been blogging? Six months. Six so months. For, so for six um, months you've you, been... Yeah, I, I didn't believe it was really a viable thing there. And we talked about it for like two years. And then at family reunion, we talked about it. And then I started doing the community blog. And now I'm like, okay, thank you. <laughs> and my comment to you at that time was, look, your Craigslist is stuff you have to work on every single day. Your blog becomes one of these things where the day you work on it, then you put it out there and it kind of, it lives for a lot longer. And I think maybe that's part of what convinced you to do this. But as that we start to look, <laughs> as we start to look right. down here through her blog post, you guys, you can see all of these sorts of posts, you know, no down payment VA home loans in Anchorage, like that post sent seven visitors to her website just in the last 30 days and generated three leads for her. You know, three bedroom condo for sale in South Anchorage, seven visitors, two leads. But you're not just relying on your blog to, to, to hit the search engines and then just forget about it. After you post the blog, you're actually bringing it back and, and you're doing, and you're putting it into Craigslist. Now talk about why you do that. So I put it into Craigslist and I drive it to my blog. Like I drive the ad to my blog, like that one I showed. Here I got um, one up here. So the Littlebrook subdivision. You've got a post about the Littlebrook subdivision, and you've driven it out of that Craigslist ad, right? Where you're saying for full subdivision information, you're, you're driving them back here to the blog. Yeah, on its own without posting it on Craigslist, my blog will only get like 50 clicks, and then it won't rank on Google, and that's kind of lame. Um, so I just put it on Craigslist because I know if I post anything on Craigslist, I'll get hundreds of clicks. And so then people click through, they get my blog, my Google sees that my blog had 200 clicks, 300 clicks, whatever it is, and then it ranks it. And then it shows up on, it gives me SEO on my blog because I've got all the clicks there. The other thing it does is that instead of just going back to those pages, it gives these consumers these are the options just to go straight ahead and go if they click on a picture on any of those links. They can go just straight and search the listings in that specific neighborhood. Um, Anchorage subdivisions aren't indexed. So if we type in subdivision on the searches, it doesn't work. So what this does is it gives people in my area by doing the community blog, they can just search specific neighborhoods. And um, I think people really appreciate that. The other thing I do is I, I put it um, in my on my website and just to help with the SEO and that kind of thing. But yeah, the Craigslist is what's giving me the SEO, definitely. Because if I don't post it to Craigslist, um, I'll only get probably 50 clicks. <laughs> but 
But then if I do, then it makes it so I have to get people on Craigslist to click on it so that I can get people on Google to click on it. Does that make sense? Okay, so what you're saying is you're, and I, okay, whenever we talk about SEO like this, there's, there's never a formula, right? Like Google didn't send a spreadsheet out to Katrina and me and say, if you do these things, we're going to rank you. But I completely agree with what you're saying, Katrina, which is if you can get a bunch of direct traffic to your blog, so you're using Craigslist as a way to drive direct traffic, right? This is, this is not somebody that did a Google search and found your blog. This is somebody that was out somewhere on the Internet, in this case it happens to be Craigslist, and, and clicked through to your blog. And then when they get there, like if they were, think about this, and you said something very early that, was, that I really liked, is these are all real people, right? Like somebody that lands on this ad and then chooses to click on this is a real person. Right, and if, and if a real person clicked a link that says full subdivision information for Little Brick in Anchorage, what the chances are they're going to read this. Right? Like you're giving them some good yeah. information in here. When was it built? What are the what's the subdivision like? Where is it located? Um, you know what schools are nearby. It, it, somebody's going to spend a decent amount of time. And you had asked me last week when we were talking about this and, and, and preparing. You had asked me to go in and see if 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 Craigslist was driving traffic to your blog, and it is. Anchorage Craigslist drove, uh, it was like 1,300 visitors in the last 30 days were driven to your blog from Anchorage Craigslist, and they spent an average of, of a minute and one second on your post. And then they also went, like on average, a, a page and a half, which means half of those people went off and looked at another page from your blog, and then you had a bunch of traffic being routed out of Active Rain, and, and that would be people clicking on on these little links here. So, you know, I, I well, think I... Well, yeah, I think that pretty much it establishes me as a neighborhood expert and my team as neighborhood experts. Like, we know what the heck is going on in Anchorage. We know about the neighborhood. And it, um, it absolutely, anything you post on Craigslist, they'll click on. But you just want them to click on something that's going to help you. So, all those people clicking, right? Now, if someone types in, like, Littlebrook, I'm pretty sure I had more clicks than any other realtors in Anchorage you didn't post about little risk and didn't put it in Craigslist, um, so it'll rank. That's, just, that's the thing, though, is that you have to get the clicks to make stuff rank, so to make it like rank on page one of Google, because page two isn't good enough, they'll never see you. But you can't just automatically have those clicks, you have to actually put it out there. So I was looking at, I was looking in here at one of these posts that had driven some, some traffic to your web, or had, had gotten some leads for you, and um, it was the Hearthstone condo. So I, I looked in here, and this one, you know, in the last 30 days, it had had eight clicks, and it had one lead generated for you. And so I, I kind of started looking around, and it's like, okay, well, so you've got this Hearthstone, um, you, you know, you've got this one, right, or, or affordable worry-free living, and it could have came because somebody clicked on this ad, and then came down through here and got back to your post, and then and then headed off to your website. It also could have came, and now I'm out here in my Google Chrome in incognito mode, and I just did a search for like Hearthstone condos in Anchorage for sale. You have your your blog showing up here in this third position, so you're you're really just taking kind of a multifaceted approach, right? You're like, okay, I'm creating these blog posts. I'm hoping that they get onto the first page because I'm doing some really good things, right? I'm writing about specific subdivisions, specific condo complexes, but you're you're not stopping there, right? She's going back and she's reinforcing it with these ads in here where she clicks or where she allows the person to, right, she's got the link heading back to her blog post. And again, she's doing this for two reasons, right? She wants that, that kind of extra SEO juice. And look, Craigslist doesn't have follow tags, but the fact that you're posting it out there, I, I have to believe that Google's not completely ignoring that, okay? They know it's being posted out there, but the idea that people are actually clicking on this and heading back to the blog post, that is the reason that those that's things are ranking a little bit better. That's where all the SEO is coming from, though. It's just my Craigslist post, but Google doesn't, it doesn't care if it came from Yahoo or from Craigslist or whatever. It, it, it's counting every page and how many clicks it has, and that's how it's ranking it. So, and how, because it wants to bring the consumer relevant information. So, I just want the most clicks, and how do I get the most clicks? Craigslist. I don't, like, I don't need the Craigslist consumers to buy stuff. I need the Google people to buy stuff, but I just need it to show up on Google. And really, what you just what you need at the end of the day is for them to come to your website and to register. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's, that's the whole goal of, of what you're doing the here. Whole thing is, 
yeah, they're people and they need help. And so if I just come from contribution and put out all the information and like here, click on it, um, a lot of the times people see that and they want help because that's what they're doing. They're looking for a house and they want help. So I'll help them. It works. Carrie, can you send out a link to Katrina's um, blog on Active Brain? It's activebrain.com slash blog slash Katrina Benton. And Katrina, you actually have like this this post right here has a really super wide image that's kind of blowing out the page, but just FYI. Um, oh. you, you guys can get in here and really look at what she does with her blogs, and we've done all kinds of classes about this type of blogging, right? This is our, she took our blogging blueprint, and she made it her own and just a little bit better, and this is something Katrina likes to do, is, is take something that she thinks is going to work, and then once it starts working, she, she makes it a ton better, but she's really gone through in her blog and just done I mean, when, the last time I saw you in person, Katrina, you said to me, like, you want to get coverage on every single subdivision, every single condo complex in Anchorage. How close are you to that? I'm pretty close. Pretty close. Pretty <laughs> close. <laughs> um, it's getting harder and harder for me to find stuff to blog about because, you know, I only want to blog about stuff with active property in it. I think we have about 550 houses for sale in Anchorage right now, and most of those subdivisions I have blogged about. So it's just getting more and more, um, the ads are getting more and more specific to where when I first started this, there might have been 13 houses for sale in that subdivision. Now it's like one or two. So, um, but I mean, I'm in the map app this whole city. I'm going to be the one to index it and do it that way because then people search on Google, no one else is even doing this. So I just show up. All I need is 100 clips from Craigslist per blog post. And then it's just, like you said, like you told me, you're like, it'll be evergreen. And I was like, oh, okay. And that was really appealing to me because we do spend a lot of time doing the same thing over and over again um, with our Craigslist ads. And so to be able to add another um, source of leads, you know, leads to my site without having to spend that much time, I like, I'm, it was really appealing to me. And it is working. It's six months later, and it is working. So um, you, started, you started blogging six months ago, so one, two, three, four, five, six, somewhere in this range. I think it was actually April if we were to go back. Let's look. I can't get there now. Um, I think it was March, because I came back from family reunion, and then I was so lazy for a week, and then you were like, here's the blueprint, watch these boot camp webinars, let's go. Okay, yeah, so uh, here in March is when you started blogging, and, and we can see that the that things started to, to, to change a little bit in terms of how many leads you were generating on your own it personal marketing. It improved a little bit. It improved a little bit. Just a little. That's... I mean, you, you're doing you're doing five. You did 500 in the last 30 days. You've generated 516 leads. L look, I understand almost every person. There's probably a few folks on this call, but most of you guys are are not. First off, don't do this, right? Like, don't generate 500 leads because you would you wouldn't be able to handle them all. And you, Katrina, you're That's even right. having a you're having an issue you with that at this point. Spike, um, you see the big spike June, July, and August there on. In the end of August, my team came to me and said, you need, like, you need to calm down. My team manager came to me and he said, you're overwhelming everyone, calm down. Um, I'm trying to occupy him off the computer now. <laughs> um, and I'm just trying to keep it at 500, and I'm still like, not able to get So there's, there's months there where you did over 1,000 leads. Yeah, but I really, it's not responsible for me to do that. It overwhelms my buyer's agent. I can't hire and train people that. Fast. I think we've got four buyers agents right now, um, and so we want to get them into where they're all 100% productive, and so they're most of the way there. Um, well, one I'm agent, not going to hire 11 people at once to work all the leads. So one agent. One agent doing 20. You're, you're saying if they were doing 20 of these types of posts at a time and just keeping those refreshed and, re re and ongoing, would would should expect about 20 leads a month, right? Yeah. It's all about how many you keep running. I keep like 600 running. We get about 600 leads a month or something like that. So it's it's pretty much a one to one until you can get it to where it is, you know, where you can go down and narrow down and say, okay, this is a good ad. This one didn't give me any leads. I'm not going to waste time with it. Um, and you can refine it over years. But when you're starting out, I'm thinking like, if you post 50 ads, you'll get 50 leads. Probably. That's what that's what it was for me. Um, and then, then you just have to convert the leads, and so that's a whole other ball. Whole other, it's a whole other web. Okay, you guys have an awesome rest of your week. My name is Bob Stewart. I appreciate Katrina joining me. Karen Michelle, always behind the scenes on behalf of Active Brain University.
Bye-bye, everybody.